Hello and welcome to Pitt Street Research. My name is Stuart Roberts. I'm one of the founders of our company. And with me today is Matt Chariot of a little known uh, Melbourne based health IT company called uh, Global Health. ASX code is GLH. Matt, welcome to Pitt Street Research. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you for coming by our, our offices here in Sydney. There's a myth out there that, that uh, the healthcare industry doesn't want to go digital. Uh, in fact, that's the opposite is the case. You're talking all the time with, with hospitals and so forth that have uh, serious productivity uh, drives, yeah. and, uh, and you've got uh, some of the solutions to that. Talk to us, for example, about what you've achieved in the mental health space here in Australia. Yeah. Look, sadly, mental health is our fastest growing part of our business. Right. Uh, we were fortunate in that uh, our first foray into health was largely the back office billings and appointments and all that sort of stuff. And then in 2002, we were awarded a contract to develop a mental health system for ACT Health. Right. That got us into uh, into mental health, and today it's the largest part of our business. Right. Um, and the interesting thing about mental health is that it, it's, number one, it's often a lifelong condition, yep. uh, and number two, it often involves a team of different skills to help you manage your condition. So. That's why we felt connectivity was fairly important, so that the psychologist can share data with the uh, social worker, with the psychiatrist, and so on. And with diabetes, you'd be sharing across, you know, the nurse educator with the GP, with the uh, dietitian, with the podiatrist. So, uh, our clinical systems have, from the get-go was very much about team-based care. Right. Our federal government is spending a fortune trying to give us all electronic uh, health records. Yep. At relatively little cost, you've developed uh, yeah. a, a contender. For greatness yeah. in the electronic health record space, you've called it LifeCard. Share with us what you you hope to achieve with LifeCard. Well, LifeCard is my personal health record. So the first thing is it has all my uh, my key information about myself, my history, my medications, my uh, pathology results, all of stuff which can be graphed, and eventually uh, decisions can be made either by uh, AI or yes. by uh, uh, concierge, health concierges or coaches that will look after me and or be advised that, you know, Matthew hasn't filled up his uh, his uh, blood pressure for the last week. So I get a reminder to say, hey, you haven't recorded your your uh, blood pressure this week or your sugar levels if I'm diabetic. Right. Uh, so it's about me as a consumer and consumers in general being more engaged and being more accountable for managing their, their, their health outcomes. Right. In concert, in, in conjunction with the care team. Now, um, one of the more uh, pleasing aspects of this business is uh, you funded a lot of your growth internally. Your, your revenue base is about six million a year from yeah. secure messaging system as well as the various SaaS-based platforms that you've Correct. developed. Correct. You've just raised a small amount of capital and a rights issue. What are you hoping to achieve with that? So uh, we, because our whole vision is about consumer empowerment and consumer uh, involvement in health, in managing their own conditions, uh, we see a huge opportunity in in uh, in in the stuff that we're doing quite successfully in Australia, being pushed into markets where there's a lot, much larger base of consumers, right. but with exactly the same problems of, of the higher incidence of lifelong conditions, whether it's diabetes or high blood pressure or anxiety or so on. So uh, part of that money is going towards uh, developing uh, sales, uh, uh, both locally as well as uh, overseas. And uh, another part of the money is to continue to perhaps shape our, uh, our R&D for the consumer application in particular. Right. Now, your market cap is, it's fair to say, tiny. Uh, we're capped at about $5.2 million at the current uh, current share price. Correct. Right. Um, now, uh, if you were to say to a group of investors, here's why we should invest in you, what would you say? Well, I think uh, we are in a very uh, uh, high growth uh, area of the market. It's the intersection of health and technology. Healthcare is a universal product. The way you treat diabetes or anxiety or high blood pressure in in Turak is the same as Timbuk Timbuk Two. Right. So it's a universal product. Sure. Uh, and um, the incidence of of um, of uh, lifestyle diseases is on the increase. The ability for funders of healthcare to fund health is is becoming uh, prohibitive. Right. So we need to think differently. And I think getting the consumer involved, getting the consumer engaged, getting the consumer to sort of work with the Internet of Things, you know, ideally I heard someone say, uh, you know, I would want my weighing machine to tell my, um, talk to my life card, which then talks to the fridge and locks up the food, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's that sort of thing, right? Right, right. So, but to do that, you do need a, a, a consumer health record, which right, is life card, right. right? And you want a team of carers or coaches or concierges telling you, hey, uh, you need to change your behavior. Right. You know, otherwise you're just going to get worse 
and you're going to get unproductive, you're going to get depressed, you're going to get overweight, whatever the case might be. Right. Well, it's a great story. Matt Cherian, thanks for coming and visiting us. Yeah, and uh, you can find out more by visiting Global Health's website. Yep. Thank you for listening. Thanks, Stuart.